how to build a super simple and easy solar filter. If you've only got a small chop and flip system, so you know maybe it's using barrels, maybe an IBC, but it's a chop and flip system, you must have filtration. So how do we build a small little filter to catch all of that solid waste? I'm going to show you how. Super simple, super cheap, and super easy. So there is an old school thought that we don't need to have solid waste removal, that we can just chuck all of the solid waste into our grow beds and put a whole heap of worms in there and they'll take care of it. That's a very old school way of doing it and it's never been a successful way because what it means is it's a ticking bomb. It will depend on how much waste your fish are producing and how much uneaten food is in there, but eventually it will clog up your, up your grow bed, which will do two things. It will cause it to go anaerobic meaning no oxygen for the plant roots, and then that water that does not have oxygen available will then go into your fish tank, cause problems for your fish who need oxygen, so we don't want that to happen, but it will also cause both ammonia and nitrite spikes. Those are toxic and those will kill your fish. Now, some people, and I find, if you wanna not have, if you don't wanna spend 10 minutes to build yourself a solar filter, that's your choice. But I say 10 minutes to build it, maybe 15, depending on what you're doing, that really doesn't take long. Or in six months or 12 months, you can pull out all of that clay, clean it all, don't kill your bacteria though, so find a way of cleaning it without using chlorinated water and put it all back in. Depending on the size of your system, that can take days and it is very hard manual work. So you can avoid all that by making a super simple solids filtration system. Seriously, if you've got a small system, People go, you don't need salt. You do. 15 years of experience in this industry, you do. All right? And I'm going to show you. Let's just do it. Check out the description to find some more information about aquaponics and how you can move forward and get this happening. Okay, so I am using this 150ml stormwater drain pipe to make my little solid separate. I worked out the, the height that I want the holes to be. I've got three holes that I'm drilling at this time two down the bottom, so one here, one on this side, so they're the outlets, so the water will be going out on either side with some valves, and the water is coming in up the top here. They're different fittings, so these valves, what are they? These ones are inline 20 mil, so that's why I've got the hosing nozzle on this side, I've got the tap part so I can adjust the flow rate, which is awesome and I'll be screwing this into the PVC pipe, and that's a 20 mil. To come into is smaller. Uh, it is 13 mil, and 13 mil coming up, so that's the aquarium hose coming up into it, and 15 mil going into the actual pipe. So just using the little hole drills that I have, the hole saws, I've worked out to do the ones with the valves for me. It is 25 mils and that will give me a very nice, very nice hole. And I have tested the holes first to make sure that it is actually the right size. So having the flat surface, now I do have a cap on the bottom of this pipe. It's going to just help hold everything where it needs to be. And very gently, Now, let's in. So, almost through. Now, I didn't apply any actual pressure to the drill. I simply allowed the, the weight of it to do itself and just holding it in place. But I do have a shoulder injury, so I can definitely feel it. Again, the bottom one, right where the hole is, or where the marker is, and letting the drill do the rest. There are different types of hole, hole saws that you can use. When it gets a little bit stuck, sometimes you just need to as evenly as I would like it to be and I will need to make sure that using a nice little blade we take off all of 
or the berry part. You want a nice smooth edge to be able to fit that that in. And just to show you, wow! I've got songs in my head. If it ever happens to you, it certainly happens to me. Twisting it in, putting a little bit of um, plumber's tape on that will keep it nice and firm. So we're going all the way in. Now, if I was at all worried, I could also add a little bit of aquarium grade silicon around here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing the third hole, and then I'm going to test it with water to see if I actually do need to do that. I might not need to add. Um, I might not need to add silicon. Doing using silicon, make sure it's aquarium grade silicon. If I left that fitting in now as I'm continuing to drill, which you know I always do, so I'm switching to the 19 mil now for the smaller hole. If you bang it or it gets caught in some way, that could then pose problems. You just don't want to damage the little fittings, so it's always best to do all the cutting first, but do check it as you're going to make sure you're the right sizes. So this is where the water is going to come in. Same process, it's just a small old one. There's no valve on this. It's coming straight from the fish tank. I do have a valve in the fish tank that can adjust. There we go, adjust the pump. Which just now here that's flood and drain part there. So just trimming off these. These edges, don't cut yourself. You can use a deburring tool. I don't have one. I'm actually using a different knife tool than I normally use. And do it on both sides, making sure that you've got no sharp edges anywhere. Try not to enlarge the hole any larger, because that was a perfect fit before. If I enlarge it in any way, that's going to cause a problem. Now, my sawing, I actually didn't take off the edges while I was sawing and cutting this off, so I shall do that now. I'm going to get my big file out and file off that end. The one thing this doesn't have is it doesn't have another lid to put on it, so I could buy another cap or I could use a piece of shape cloth or something like that, just because any water that goes in there will start to get a bit of algae on it. Running things along, that is smooth. Make sure you do clean up the mess after you've made it. We don't want getting into the environment in any way. So this should easily, if you've got the whole size right, screw in. And if you've got a bit overzealous and the whole size is a bit big, silicon, aquarium grade silicon works super duper well. Too small, use a hand file. But I do try to avoid those things if at all possible. Now this is feeling a bit... It looks like it's tight, but it kind of feels a bit unstable. And that feels better now that I've done that extra bit of tightening. So we have that now on either side. And we have the two valves, which I want to make sure are closed. And we've got the top one in. I still need to glue the bottom in, but before I do that, I want to check and test water. So I'm just putting the inlet part in. We don't want any of it leaking. Okay, but this top one, we really should not have water up at this level. Ideally, the water should be able to stay at approximately this level, so halfway. So again, the valves are closed. Um, water may come out the bottom, right out the bottom, because I have not glued that in. Yep, that's what I was perfect on wanting to check that. So you can see water is actually coming out from the hole. So I need to silicon around that part. And that's perfectly okay. That is what I wanted to check. I suspected. And I would normally want to do it, but I was wanting to really give you and show you that we can't just assume because that's tight 
that will be right. So I need to completely dry that off now. Silicon, especially these two that where the valves are, silicon the mess, they can't move and it's going to take about 24 hours for aquarium grade silicon to dry. And also glue, well, it's pipe cement. Um, PVC cement will, that's what will hold this cap itself in place. Though it's an absolute bitch to get off, it's on really tight. But yeah, silicon around that, wait 24 hours, then I'll be able to switch them over. How cool is that? And that was how easy and quickly that